rally the troops, and everyone make sure to mask up. Over the nose and mouth, Bill. We, as always, celebrate the wins as we dive into this special show. Joe tries to get into the front door as we are about to go on air. Sports Night is next. Hello and welcome to Sports Night. I'm Joe Young. And I'm Holly Shapiro. And Joe, you know, I appreciate you flying in for the, the show tonight, but you look a little different. There's something different about you tonight. I'm trying to put my finger on it. Well, I did have a big lunch, so I'm feeling a little stuffed. Oh, okay. That must be it. Ha ha. Well, anyway, we're going to get right into the action tonight. We got a lot of sports to stuff your way. We're going to start off with boys hockey. It was their final home game of the season at the Crick and they played host to Osseo. Um, guys? Oh, there it is, okay. <laughs> well, the Cardinals last saw Osseo way back in January. Both teams were coming off a loss for this matchup, and we're looking to put one in the win column. We pick up the action here in the second period with Osseo up by a score of 2-0. Daniel Ellingson scores on a wrist shot from the right circle to put Osseo up by three. For the Cardinals, Nicholas Espinoza finds Nick Clark out front for the goal, and it's a 3-1 game. Osseo gets a power play goal to go up 4-1, but just 14 seconds later, Kamani Poor has the answer, and suddenly it's 4-2. Nate Clark then gets a chance to use his skate and return the favor to Espinoza, who scores a backdoor goal to cut the Osseo lead to 4-3, and we've got a game. Third period action, and after a loose puck gets poked around a few times out in front of the net, Luke Sawicki puts it in for his second goal of the game, and 6-3 Osseo, but the cards were not done. Some beautiful passing up front leads to a tic-tac goal, and Nathan Clark has two in the game. Now just two minutes later, he gets an excellent pass out in front of the goal, puts it away, and completes his hat trick for the night, and the Cardinals have closed the gap to 6-5. Last minute of play, Goalie gets pulled, turnover at center right, leads to an empty netter for Osseo with under a minute left. That goal was a hat trick for Sawicki, and that final score stands 7-5. So. Well, obviously, we were there, Joe, and, and it was an opportunity for the Cardinals to, to get a win, and they played well. I mean, they played, it was a competitive game. We've seen a lot of, uh, unfortunately, a lot of blowouts for this boys hockey team, but it was a game where they played competitively and they had a chance in the end to win. Oh, yeah, a lot of great scoring, uh, a lot of people participating in there. So good, uh, good momentum for them going into their next game. So I know what it is, I think. You're, did you get taller? I, I'm wearing lifts. Oh, you're wearing lifts. Okay, yeah. all right, that's it. Okay. Anyway, uh, the boys hockey next game, uh, they had a chance to play against Spring Lake Park. And uh, that one did not go in their favor. So nine to one, the final score on that one. Um, 38 saves, though, for Hanlon. Uh, Anderson had a goal in that game. 0-15 uh, record for the boys at that point. So, lot, another lopsided loss on that one. And we get a look at the Section 5 AA tournament bracket. With their record, they draw top-seeded Maple Grove. And uh, that game will be on CTN. That will, game, that will be on CTN. And we will be there, quite obviously. And it's going to be an interesting game for the boys. A lot of the guys are, are uh, on spring. Coming, some of the guys are on spring break right now. So Coach Frock is going to get an opportunity to really kind of see what he has from some of the younger players. And I think, Joe, is, uh, as we know, this is a good opportunity for next year to kind of develop some guys and, and see what they, what they have coming up. And at that point in time, uh, it, it's going to be hard. I mean, it's going to be difficult. Maple Grove's number one team in the state. So it, it's certainly going to be a tough one as, uh, as we, uh, we get that game on. It's actually Thursday night, which will be tomorrow if you're watching this live. Yeah, no question. Uh, any ice time is good ice time as you're prepping your team for the next season. You, you, without a doubt, that is very true. Well, that'll move us out of the boys' hockey and into girls' hockey. Uh, they played Centennial last week. 1-0 loss there. Uh, real close game. Uh, Mayer had 27, I'm sorry, 25 saves. Uh, Centennial outshot CPCR 26-15. And that was their Centennial game. That was. Well, after that narrow loss at Centennial, the girls' hockey team was looking to pick up some momentum before section tournament. 
The final regular season game for the Bluebirds was on the road at Elk River Ice Arena. The Elks were riding a three-game winning streak and looking to make it four. A tripping penalty just 17 seconds into the game put Elk River on the power play, and they capitalized with the opportunity. Kylie Husseth with a goal, take a 1-0 lead. Later in the first of the CPCR at the power play, a turn at the blue line leads a shorthanded chance. Allison Fisher finds an open Maddie Christensen who buries the puck to make it a two-goal advantage. On to the second period. Fisher takes the puck up ice with some nice stick work, gets her own rebound to extend that Elks lead to 3-0. The Bluebirds on the penalty on the power play or penalty kill unit was out on the ice in the third period. Kylie Scott found Erica Thiessen open in front of the net. She beats Hess and CPCR gets a shorthanded goal off their own and cuts the deficit to 3-1. Bluebirds would pull the goalie in the third and get a few chances, but Ashley Hess shut the door and nothing else got past her. The Elks win the game 3-1. Both teams get ready for section tournament play. And that section tournament play, they drew Rogers. So those five double-A quarterfinal action, they were seeded fifth, faced off against that fourth seed Rogers squad last night. So the CPCR Bluebirds during the season faced the Royals twice, and they lost both of those matchups. But in the playoffs, you throw out the records, and they were looking to flip the script in this third matchup. Near the end of the first period, Rogers turns the puck over in their own end. Broken Johnson gets a good look, but that's saved by Alexa Backman. No score after one period. Emma Rooks gets a shot to start off the second, but Mayer's there to turn it away. And just a few minutes later, another chance as Abigail Payton gets a good look, and that one's tossed aside with a pad save. Bluebird's able to connect on a long pass up ice to Molly Terabeza for a breakaway chance, but Backman's able to make the save on that one, deflecting the puck up and over the net. Just over five minutes left in the second, some good puck movement by the Royals, leads to a rebound opportunity out front for Abigail Payton, and she puts it home to give Rogers a 1-0 lead. Moving on to the third period, the Royals win a draw in the offensive zone, Avery Farrell puts it in and back with a backhand to add another goal for her side and extend that lead to what would be the final score of 2-0. Rogers wins the quarterfinal matchup. And they move on in their bracket to face off against top-seeded Maple Grove on Thursday. You know, and it was a, it was an interesting game. The, the Bluebirds played pretty well, and and Cameron Mayer played really well in net. You know, the the unfortunate thing for the Bluebirds, Joe, is I, I like the fact that you shaved your beard. The unfortunate thing for the Bluebirds was they just couldn't find the back of the net. And, the, and they, they've been having that problem for most of the season. They're, sh they're out shooting opponents, but just not scoring goals. So it's unfortunate the season ended that way. They lost. That was the third loss of the season to Rodgers. So their season is done, but they have nothing to hang their heads about. They had, they had a good year. They just didn't get the amount of wins that they felt they were coming into the season. Oh, absolutely. And I know uh, the Elk River game, Kylie Scott had a great game that game. She was all over the ice, offense, defense. So definitely some great players yep, on the team. Absolutely. A lot to look forward to. Are you dressing better, too? Is that, yeah, maybe. I like your tie, by the way. Is I, that uh, new? Is that new? I lost a little weight, yeah. You did lose a little tie, weight. a new tie, new wardrobe. I'm really post-pandemic feeling myself. You, well, and you look yourself, too. Thank nice you. haircut as well. Well, let's move to wrestling. Cardinals were back on the mat last Thursday. Cardinals ranked number three, and the Rangers ranked number two, Forest Lake. We had a camera there for section semifinal at Forest Lake. Tyler Herr wrestling at 120, avenged an earlier defeat with a 7-4 win to score three points for the Cardinals. And a nice uh, job by Tyler there as he's able to get his opponent down. Demetrius Seals, 160, won a tough one. 8-6 victory for him. Career match num victory number 98. They have a chance to get 100 wins with that. Tournament play coming up. Elijah Madimba wrestling at 170. Gets the fall over Peyton Christensen at 447 for a big six-point win for Elijah. The move to 182. And that's Alex Kowalczyk squeaks out a slim margin of victory with a 2-1 decision. Nice win for him there. He's going to get the, get the win. And we will... There you, there you see it, get the point. Then we're going to switch to heavyweight Gavin Layton. Gets the fall at 148 over Ethan Zimmerman. Ultimately, unfortunately, the Cards are going to lose the match, 43-21. But uh, Gavin Layton continues his amazing wrestling this season. Oh, yeah, he's been great all season long. Cards have had an excellent wrestling season this year. 
They really, they really have, and and uh, you know now as uh, they've got some upcoming, and and certainly they they've got some things to prove, and they continue as they go towards state and sections. Uh, upcoming, got the individual section seven tournament happening today, actually. Yep. So a lot of a lot of opportunity for some wrestlers to move on from that, and then obviously the uh, state tournament after that. This is true. State tournament comes after that, and and I'll, you know we talked about it all the time. Gavin Layton, who was undefeated all the way to the final match in the state tournament last year, has a lot to avenge. And but the Cardinals, that's just, it's not just him. They've got uh, they've got some opportunities to send some other wrestlers to state as well. Well, we're going to move on from wrestling to uh, another event that happens on a mat: gymnastics. Gymnastics had a meet against Maple Grove. Uh, a lot of good individual finishes there. Rushmeyer fourth place in the vault. Uh, Drummy on bars in fifth. Uh, also play six in beam. Uh, they would lose that meet 114 to 138. Some uh, spare points in the decimal column there as well. Uh, but Rushmeyer ended up all around second place with a .200. So good meet for the gymnastics team. And then upcoming for gymnastics, as with most of the sports right now, would be tournament play. Tournament play is correct. And, you know, and they, the gymnastics squad dealt with some injuries, as we've talked about in past shows. And, and so, you know, they've, they've probably not obviously scored what they wanted to coming into the season, but they've, they overcame some adversity and, and, you know, being able to at least compete, obviously. And so you saw, the, you saw Maple Grove's pretty good, and they, and they did lose that match. Well, and we do have an opportunity for more coverage with that kind of stuff yep. uh, with CTN now that we have uh, expanded our sports coverage. Uh, more coverage that we had was swimming and diving. And that Section 7 meet happened just recently. Boys swimming and diving. We're actually going to start out with the diving. We see Jack Simmer with a reverse dive pike here. He ended up placing second overall. And he advances individually to the state meet with a 395-95 total score. The 200 medley relay of Will Melsha, Brian Tran, Nick Melsha, and Tyler Schultz set new section pool and school records with a total time of 135.83. Absolutely blitzed the pool and section records by more than a second, over three seconds in front of the second place Anoka team to finish out that medley relay. Just great season from them. The whole swim team breaking all kinds of records. In the 200 freestyle, Nick Melsha had a chance in advance to the state meet with a second place overall finish. See him finish up at the wall there. And then we go on to the IM, the boys 200. Will Malsha had a chance to set the section and pool records. His new record on the books are 152.59. That also made him the second fastest in program history and qualified him for state as well. In the 100 fly, Tyler Schultz met the qualifying standards to advance to the state meet also, and he placed second overall in that event. 100 backstroke, more records fallen at the pool. Will Melsha setting new section pool and school records with a time of 50.88 seconds, qualified for state, and is the number one overall ranked swimmer in that event heading into the state meet. 100 breaststroke, Tyler Schultz, Set more records for the section, the pool, and the school, 57-20. Now, those records didn't stand about four hours later because they were the first team to swim. They were broken by Forrest Lake, but he did qualify for the breaststroke with a time of 59-16. The 400 freestyle relay, Will Melsha, Nick Melsha, Abby Menanja, and Brian Tran finished in second place with a total time of 317.06, and by finishing sec second place there, they automatically qualify to advance to the state meet in swimming. So just excellent meet for the swimmers. Um, Will Melsha was named Section 7AA Swimmer of the Year. Uh, the assistant coaches Paige Cowan and Nick Hedman were named Section 7AA Assistant Coaches of the Year. Just excellent work. High GPA from the entire team. I think a 3.47 is what the coach said. So just wonderful season from the swimmers. 
you know, we've talked about the swim and diving team all year, Joe, as you, as you know, and, and it's been a special year for them, and, and it's been so much fun following them. And Coach Donaldson has been so excited about what this team has done, and, and kudos to everybody going to state. Kudos to everybody on this team because they really swam well this year, and it was a very, very exciting season for them. Absolutely. They have it's not over. It's not over. They have nope. two relays and five individual swimmers going to state as well as a diver. Um, coach said that this is the most points they've ever scored in his time as coach. So definitely something to hang your swim cap on. And how he did not get coach, uh, coach of the Year is beyond me. Well, coaches are always proud to see their assistants win those yeah, honors. So, agree. so congrats to them for both of those. And now moving on from wet water, let's move over to some colder water and Nordic skiing. So state championships going on, 75th place uh, with a time of 28.48.7 was Lila Gilliard, Aaron Casey in 83rd. Uh, they see their times there for both classic and freestyle. A lot of work, a lot of work to get that Nordic skiing done, especially as the snow starts to melt. You bet. It's a little slushier. You bet. Well, moving on from Nordic skiing, we're going to cover some round ball. Round ball. Basketball. Now, boys faced Osseo on March 11th. Uh, we see some good stats there. Galeman with 25, Henry with 9. Um, good steals from the team as well. Uh, but ultimately, 82-43 loss to Osseo there. Uh, and we see that leads them into the state tournament. Uh, and over the top seed there. Obviously moves on for free. Coon Rapids facing Blaine in a few days. And we'll be there. We're covering that game. That's uh, on Saturday. We, and that's an afternoon game. So that is an after 3.30 start. Coverage. Yeah. Yep. So excited to bring live playoff coverage this year. No, uh, that unfortunately will not be live. The hockey is live, but unfortunately hockey the is, basketball yes. will not be live. Yep. But live hockey, delayed basketball, playoffs. Yes. Well, girls basketball rounded out their season as well. Uh, played Osseo. Two point loss there. Very narrow one. 73-75. Uh, and Tomboy had 25, Post with 16, Georgie with 12, Syverson with 12 as well, and Kayala with 8, leading them into their next game against Rogers, 58-80 loss. Same names on there, Georgie and Yambe, all scoring in the double digits, but ultimately ending out with that 1-14 record after that game. We see the 7 quadruple A girls basketball tournament bracket there, where they will play against Blaine. Double header. We're doing a double header on Saturday. Girls start at uh, at one. Boys, as I mentioned, at three thirty. And and again, that that's an opportunity for the, the Cardinals to see if they can, you know, they have they've had a tough season as well, as you know, Joe. And, and that's an opportunity for them to see if they can come in and play Blaine, get an opportunity to get a win, get the upset if they can. I mean, you know, with with their size, with Post and Tomway and Georgie, that's something that there's their strength, and they're going to try and use that on Saturday. And we always say, it, once you hit the playoffs. Throw out the records. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Well, Howie. It's been fun. It's been a pleasure. I got to catch a flight back. Well, I'm driving to the airport, so don't I, worry about it. I'll get you there. I appreciate it. It's really hard to run with uh, those short legs. With these short legs, yeah. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Well, then that is going to do it for this edition of CTN Sports Night. We want to thank everyone out there for joining us and continuing to support everything we do here at CTN. For the entire crew, including Howie Shapiro, I'm Joe Yund, saying goodnight.